Get ready to witness the genius of my perfect 433 as I take you through the tactical nuances and innovative approaches used to influence this tactic and the style of play, which at the end of it will all boil down to you completely ripping your opposition's defense apart. Winning the SPL with Hibs by 10 points says a lot about this tactic, but that's not the only surprising result we managed to get. With a keen focus on inverted wing backs, high wide wingers, and key tactical principles, I will now unravel the intricacies behind this brilliant 4 3 3. But before I do, shout out to my Patreons. I appreciate y'all. Yes, my beautiful people, I see your beautiful smile. Welcome back. We are on a roll with these tactics. Today, we are sharing a 4-3-3, heavily influenced, actually, by Onslaught at Feyenoord. So I've taken one or two, maybe three, of his key tactical principles and implemented it into our own 4-3-3, dominating the opposition on this game. So what I'm going to do now is break down what I've taken from Onslaught or just to keep uh, tactical principles in our tactic as well. And then we're going to look at the tactic after and see the results as well so let's get stuck into it so to break down the tactical idea onslaught is known for his tactical approach that involves deploying his wingers in a high and wide position this plan stretches the opposition's back line creating gaps that final can then exploit to take advantage of these gaps, Slot will then have his striker between the opposition centre-backs. This will then pull the pair of central defenders together, creating space between those centre-backs and the full-backs. Feyenoord will then usually capitalise on the space by using aggressive runners from midfield to exploit the gaps. <laughs> but not exclusively, as it could be the full-backs underlapping or given that the system has positional rotations, it may be a central player or a full-back momentarily in a high and wide position with the wing than underlapping. It's a fluid and dynamic attacking system that relies on the movement of several players to create and exploit gaps in the opposition's defence, manipulating space and pulling the opposition's defence apart. Teams will of course look to counter what Feyenoord and obviously what we do and one way is by tucking in their fullbacks to become narrow, blocking the central route towards goal. This is exactly what we and Feyenoord expect. There will still be a plan though for us to counter this while being able to still pull their defence apart. Instead of trying to force our way through the opposition's narrow defence, we can move the ball around the back line going behind the fullbacks because the opposition's defence are now drawn centrally, there's space to exploit out wide. So, if we can successfully find the aggressive runner from midfield between the central defenders and the fullbacks, then we have a direct route towards goal. The player can either finish off the move himself or square it off to a teammate. If the opposition choose to tuck in their fullbacks and be very narrow, the space opens up in the wider areas for us to play in. We can have superior quality in a 1v1 situation or look for an overlap to make it a 2v1 situation. The aim is always looking to create high quality scoring chances. The wingers being high and wide as we progress through the phases also has its purpose during the early build-up stages. Using inverted fullbacks during the build-up creates more options in the centre, less space between the players for ball retention and also a good starting position to delay the opposition's counter-attacks should we lose possession. Having wingers playing wide and stretching the pitch allows for the central midfielders to play more advanced, also allowing the two inverted fullbacks to move in midfield alongside a holding midfielder. In this setup, we are looking to create something of a 2-3-5 in possession, again, similar to Onslaught's Feyenoord. The wide winger and inverted fullback combination, more importantly, allows us to create numerical advantages against the opposition's back line. If the opposition are using a back four, we could then potentially create situations where we become numerically superior with five attackers against four defenders. Against a back five, there is always an option to be brave by asking one of the fullbacks to either adopt a new role and or duty can simply ask the inverted fullback to be more attacking or change his role to a more traditional fullback where he can help a winger create advantages against the opposition's fullback. The objective is always to find a free player. In the scenario where our winger is in possession and the opposition fullback engages by pressing, the winger can then find a free aggressive runner from midfield who is making a run in behind. 
Another way to find a free man is with a switch of play. When the defending team is positioned to one side or we've sucked them in centrally, the far side fullback becomes vulnerable to our long switch of play due to either qualitative superiority or numerical if we have a midfielder or fullback supporting our winger. Again, creating that 2v1 situation. Lastly, similarly to Slot's playing style because this tactic was heavily influenced by his Feyenoord, is to be fluid within the system and to find different interchanges and rotations. This approach is often referred to as total football. I know, we're playing total football with Hibs in Scotland and it involves all players being comfortable in every position of the field or on the field. The Feyenoord players are trained to move quickly and seamlessly between positions, which makes it difficult for the opponents to track them. The constant rotations create a lot of questions for the opposition team because they are unsure whether to follow the Feyenoord players or stay in their current positions. And the same applies for us in Football Manager. This style of play requires a lot of skill and coordination among players, so teamwork actually is going to be a very important attribute. Teamwork, I would say, concentration, anticipation of the ball will be very important. This total football is also a highly effective strategy when done well. By maintaining fluidity within the system and constantly changing their positions, the team can create more scoring opportunities. So that was a tactical analysis. I hope you guys liked it. Now we are going to go into Football Manager to break it down. I mentioned my Patreons earlier in the video because they have been absolutely fantastic with their support recently. On Patreon, I do give out some bonus content. We do some tactical talks as well, but my favorite thing is the bonus content, recording some things as I'm working on it before everyone on YouTube gets to see it. So this very tactic, people on Patreon got to see it. With Hibs as well, we played Celtic and Rangers back to back in a title race. Of course, we all know the results now, but it's, it's great content, great content. So if you have been enjoying my YouTube content, then please consider supporting on the Patreon and join man like Ace Boogie, CJ and Jeffrey who recently joined. So thank you to those three and thank you in advance should you choose to support. Now, let's go into FM. I absolutely don't mind doing this. I just hate that I feel I have to do this. Again, it's only one or two out of a few thousands that will be questioning the results and the off authenticity. Authentic, authentic, authentic. What's the authenticity? I think I said it. Authenticity. I think that's it. I think that's it of my result. So this is my game status with Hibs. I've literally just finished the save as well and I went straight into recording it. Four hours it took, but you can see it's only saved five times. So there's no save and reload. Database changes zero. No in game editor used. No in game editor allowed. So the results are 100% authentic. Thank God I didn't have to say that authenticity word again. So the results with Hibernian in the Cinch Premiership, we played 38, winning 29, drawing five, losing four. Those four losses against, both against Hearts, one away to Celtic, one away to Rangers, getting 92 points. In the UEFA Conference League, I'm disappointed with this because I rotated my side, which we was 3-1 up in the first leg and I thought, you know what, rotate my side, the second leg, they ain't coming back. They came back. We got knocked out. Scottish Cup knocked out in the semi-finals, but to be fair, in the Cups, we don't really mind. So, what are the tactics that we use to get these results? So, of course, we have to kick things off with the 4-3-3. Now, we're not going to completely recreate the tactic from scratch, but I am going to talk about the key roles and the key duties that really help this tactic play out in the way that we want it to play in so first off we're actually going to go into the team instructions and we're going to get the attacking whip to be fairly wide that's very important because we want to stretch the opposition's um defensive line and a good place to start actually is by using your attacking whip and pulling it on fairly wide or wide but you know we want a bit of What's that word? Unpredictability. That's the word. We want some unpredictability in both our attack and a build up. So we're not exclusively looking to attack in those wider areas. We're just going to have a fairly wide attacking width. Stretch out the width in between our players. Now, to further complement that wide attacking width, we're actually going to use a winger role in attack. Now, the reason why I'm going for a winger role in attack because he's hard coded to stay wider. So that's the player's natural behavior. Now, on the left hand side, we've got an inverted winger on support. He doesn't have any natural behavior in terms of his 
his width, so he's not going to sit more narrow. He's neither going to stay wider, but we can further or increase his tendency to stretch out. So again, we're just trying to further complement our fairly wide attacking width in attack. We almost have the front three already. The inverted winger staying wide. We've got the winger naturally staying wide. Now up front, we're going to have a striker that is able to pin. Pin those, <laughs> pin those centre backs back now. Advance forward on attack can do it. A pressing forward on attack can do it. The only issue is they both move into channels. I am not saying that advance forward or a pressing forward won't work in this system or they won't go on to score seventy odd goals. But our tactical plan is about getting our striker to be able to pin two centre backs, create that space in between the centre backs and the full backs, and then allow our aggressive midfielders to run and exploit that. So the role is actually a poacher. I did try and flirt with the target forward in a different save, not with Hibbs in a team that actually had a target forward. But to be fair, I do think the poacher gave us more of what we wanted. The target forward still might have that tendency to jump deep and link up play. Poacher might do it, but he will only do it in moments he knows it's good for him. So now picture the scene. You've got the striker pinning two centre backs. You've got the winger stretching the pitch. So you've got both full backs thinking, hey, I'm marking my winger. Then the centre backs are like, hey, we've got to mark this striker. How can we exploit that gap in between? I mean, one way we can do that is get a central midfielder on a tack and we're going to have simply move into channels. And then on the right hand side, we're going to have a Mazala on support who naturally that player's behavior will get further forward, stay wider and move into the channels. Exactly what we want. I can hear it in your heads already. I can hear you asking, why not just have a double Mazala? You absolutely can, but they're both roaming from position. So just structurally, I felt that a central midfielder on attack was the better option to to create a better tactic, if that makes sense. So a double Mazala is totally on the cards. It's totally on the table for you. To be fair though, I'll probably be an elite team. So if I was in the Premier League, I'll probably try that at a Liverpool or a Manchester City before I try that at a Fulham. So we've set our plan. We've set the idea. We've got our two wingers holding the width. We've got our striker pinning back the centre backs and our aggressive runners from midfield. But that also needs to be supported. Earlier, I spoke about inverted wing backs and they are going to be key in allowing these centre midfielders to get further forward, but also not do so much dropping work to build up play because we are playing out from the fence. And our inverted wing back will be allowed to move inside there. So to the right sided one as well. And this just naturally asks, hey, you guy, can you push up further forward as we move into these areas here? And then voila, we have a two, three, four, one but we should put all of these in one unit and call it a five. <laughs> So with the tactic completed, the player roles look a little bit like this. In goal, we have a super keeper on attack, no added instructions. The left wing back or the left back, dribble more, Mark Tyler is the inverted wing back on support. The right back is the inverted wing back on defend, tackle harder. The left side of the centre back is a ball playing defender, defend, tackle harder. The right side of the centre back is a central defender on cover. So here I am trying to think a little bit more logically as well. At Hibs, it's likely or unlikely that you're going to have two balls playing defenders so we have one and then we've got one just focusing on sweeping up those little areas there ahead of them they have a defensive midfielder on support no added instructions the Mazala take more risk tackle harder the left-sided uh, central midfielder Juba Moore move into the channels tackle harder the left winger Ah, oh, he's got a few. Take more risk, hold up the ball, hold position, stay wider and tackle harder. The right winger cut inside tackle harder. Lastly the poacher he will be tackling harder the team instructions. For the team instructions, we already spoke about the attacker width being on fairly wide. We are playing out from the back, but we also got this little instruction here on underlap left, underlap right, further complementing, I also said compromise there, further complementing those aggressive runs. When the wide, wide wingers are stretched to pitch, we're going to get those aggressive runners in between and then we can release that free man. Run out the fence and something that I don't think I've used this year or given you guys, be more expressive. In transition, when possession has been lost, counter press, when possession has been won, counter attack, exploit those gaps. At Feyenoord, where this tactic 
tactic was originally created, I didn't have counter-attacking on, so it might not always have to be an option for you. Also, in a variation, it's not an option because it's absolutely detrimental when you come across a 4-4-2 away from home. Lastly, out of possession, we are in a high press, high defensive line, trigger press much more often, prevent the short goalkeeper distribution and step up more. I've just spoke about variations and we're just gonna have a quick look at them quickly so when you are up against a back five now there's going to be three center backs against your one poacher what we are doing now is throwing a wing back up further forward so that allows our inverted winger to be a little bit more narrow and our wing back getting further forward still allowing us to numerically overload the opposition's defensive line now i have noticed a mistake here myself which is going to remove that stay wider and then boom save when you're playing against the bigger teams away from home now again only away from home we are using a much higher tempo this allows us to play a little bit more counter-attacking rather than patient and methodically trying to build up play which is which is going to try to hit them where it hurts automatically straight away that is the only change and lastly when you're up against the 442 away from home we don't have counter-attacking on because it's just absolutely detrimental but also our defense line we don't have step up more again it felt detrimental having step up more against two strikers now this system is also very effective against those lower ranked teams so let's say i have to play livingston st johnston motherwell or ross county away from home i can use this variation where they are going to try and counter us and we're just trying to be a little bit more wary a little bit more cautious so yeah when we win the ball we're not just going to throw everyone forward because if we lose the ball then they're just going to look to counter us back So for the results, we've already gone through the Hibernian results, but we haven't seen the stats. We scored the most goals with 95 goals, the most shots for the third uh, fewest shots against us. Average possession quite high, 62%, the second best pass completion. We also completed the second most passes. Third with the most dribbles, fewest conceded. Yes, it is us. Most clean sheets. Yes, it is us. Rangers did actually have the most expected goals for as well. But as we all know, the SPL is completely dominated by Celtic and Rangers. So for us to even be anywhere close to winning it is great. Us winning it with these stats, flipping now was amazing. <laughs> We also done a random test in Sweden with IFK nor coping. Exactly that. Nobody in Sweden were able to cope with our tactic. Well, that's such a bad joke. But even tactically, as this was done before the Hibs won, you can see I was making changes. So this is sort of the second or third version where we're now we're using two ball playing defenders. Our right back is not an inverted wing back on defend. And it is in tests where I can literally see it myself firsthand, where it does also depend on a team you are the league that you're in as well it, it all depends it all depends statistically scored the most goals most shots for fewer shots against most dribbles made the fewest conceded and the most clean sheets when it comes to possession it dropped a little at no coping i don't think we could have coped with retaining possession but again at um hibs we are using a center back rather than a ball playing defender as well so uh, maybe we're getting a little extra points there and also the inverted wing back on the right hand side is also on defend at hibs i keep forgetting to show you the player stats as well the top goal scorer is our poacher most assists yeah nobody there most shots for our poacher yeah most man of the match awards as well for the best pass completion that is our goalkeeper yeah yeah that's our goalkeeper he also had the fewest conceded and lastly, our test with Feyenoord, where we absolutely dominated the Eredivisie, winning 31 out of the 34 games, drawing one, losing two. We won the Dutch Cup, we won the Johan Cruyff special. <laughs> I'm just made that up. This though, this though, apps are oh, this uh, Salzburg basically. So ba basically, Salzburg are in the final. But it could have been us. It could have been either Feyenoord or Salzburg what a semi-final that is absolutely insane so in the Champions League we knocked out Barcelona in the round of 16 we lost 3-2 at the new Camp I don't believe it's the new Camp anymore Santiago Jimenez scoring a double I've clipped in it by an accident but also we beat them in the return leg so obviously we progressed we beat Seville who are fairly easy to beat we beat Salzburg 3-1 at home before getting absolutely hammered I'm, I'm, my heart is still broken my heart is still broken but again that wasn't the final article of the tactic as this was the sort of 
tactic that we were using so basically the same as no coping with the center back on um, we've got two ball playing defenders and no defensive duty as a fullback statistically we've got the most goals most shots for the fewest shots against most dribbles made fewest conceded the most clean sheets as well possession again numbers drop a little so i do wonder if there's something behind the fact that we have a central defender on cover and also an inverted wing back on defend or was it just the SPL? Let me know. But unfortunately, that wraps up today's video. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless. And also shout out to my patrons as well. If you are considering uh, supporting me and my channel, if you do like the content, then please head over to Patreon and check it out. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless.